Well, welcome to my studio. My name is Jaime Nieto. I am in Madrid and I have now one uh, special guest for the beginning of this year. Welcome to this conversation. How are you doing? Pretty good. Thank you. Thanks, James. Well, I'm going to make some spoiler here. So the name of the album is Leap, like to jump into something. And, and it has 10 tracks. I believe you make the composition, but during the whole period of the five years, you turn that into other stage in terms of production and sound. How you produce these 10 tracks? I knew right from the word, you know, right from the get-go, that I wanted this to be a pop record, okay? I wanted it to be pop, and I also wanted it to sound good. I wanted it to sound really good to your ears. I wanted it to be lush and full and the production to be really pleasant to listen to. So that was like the first thing. So pop record, I wanted it to sound good. And then what happened was, you know, I recorded a lot of these tracks before lockdown, but they just weren't up to scratch. I really wanted to craft them and try to compress them as much as I could so that I took away everything that just didn't need to be there. So in the beginning, most of the songs sounded like a bad pop band where the song starts and everybody plays at the same time, right? And now there's just tons of space. There's loads of space. There's loads of room for the vocals. There's loads of room for the guitar parts and the string parts. And I think, I think we managed to achieve that. Thinking in the, in, the, in the instrumentation of the album, there's like, a, as I said before, like a main star, starring instrument for each track. In Paint is the piano, uh, Train is a little bit more folky, acoustic, yeah. and finally, obviously, is the drums. Uh, how you decide to, to pick the, the main instruments? If you look at Paint, Paint is probably the prototype for the whole record, because at the end of the day, you've got this very lush piano sound. You've got this very lush 12-string acoustic guitar coming in, the na-na-na-na-na, but then you've got this uh, drum and bass drum beat you know, which, which kind of sounds like an electronic drum beat, although it's played by Joe Nicklin. And what happened is, is that I took out all the kind of electronica and all the kind of arpeggiated synths, they actually came out of the song. They were originally there. But once I recorded the real instruments, then I realized that I didn't need those arpeggiated synths anymore. So I literally just, I muted them. And once I muted them, the whole track just came open. So I think, look, the answer to that question is really, I started off with a full, a full array of instruments, and then the song itself would kind of lead me through to what I would pull out. And then usually I would be left with guitar, you know, piano, but hopefully also a lot of space. Something uh, really close to what you were talking about happened with Finally, because I was watching the tutorial that you post on Instagram a couple of weeks ago and the rhythm was like really straightforward, like it's yeah, the ballad four, four, of the yeah. album, but the drums, I believe you change like the tempo and the it's drum true. structure. I thought that the song had a lot of potential, but I didn't understand why it wasn't working. It just, it just sat there, you know, and it just didn't go anywhere. It was just so predictable. So I was really happy and excited when I thought about switching to 6-8. And then I thought, well, why don't I try 6-8 and really pump it up and really put a lot of power into the, into the drums. And yeah, it came together. I mean, sometimes I catch that song like on Instagram or whatever. And I think that probably from a production point of view and a sort of overarching production and visualization of that track, I'd say it's probably up in the top three of the album. Hmm. Before we leave, you have three pre-releases and all of them has videos. Uh, we're talking about the, this empty theater here in Madrid for finally, but you have two more videos. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the, the audiovisual concept that you are managed uh, with the whole album. So Willow, who's the co-producer on the record, and his girlfriend was a cinematographer. And I said to her, why don't we just go out one day while Willow's working and let's record a video. And what we did is we recorded the walk that I would do every day with my dogs while I was working on the album. And while I was working on the album, I would be singing and thinking and working and going through my mind on all the tracks on the records. That walk became as much part of the making of the record 
as anything. It sort of had a huge influence on it. And then Train, my nephew is a graphic artist. He's a brilliant drawer. And he heard the song. The goal was I always wanted it to be a lyric video. So you can read the lyrics, but also he kind of went far and beyond and created this kind of world. And it has like a very universal perspective. So when the video ends, you see the planet go into into the universe like that. And it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Thank you, Tone, for your time and for these tracks and for all the work that you were doing with these songs. When it's going to be, when it's going to be released? The, it's the March. Great. Uh, I will invite you, everybody, uh, to follow the uh, Instagram and the social media networks because there's many content happening there. And see you next time. Adios. Bye. Ciao.